Feeling the pressure of coming up with festive holiday food and don't have the time to do it? Well, relax and listen to cookbook author Ellie Diener here with a few suggestions. And yes, the recipes are on our website. And Ellie Diener is here. Welcome. Thank you. So Thank I'm not going to go through the recipes because they are on our website, at greaterboston.org. Right. But tell me what these are. Okay. These are the, the well, these are baked wontons, which are just simply wonton wrappers that have been cut in half on the diagonal and put on a sprayed cookie sheet, nonstick uh -huh. spray, and then we put nonstick spray on them again and some Italian uh, seasoning or oregano, whatever you like, and Parmesan or Romano cheese, and then they're baked. So that's, that's an hors d'oeuvre. That's an hors d'oeuvre. That's just yep. a straightforward. And it's very low in calories. Too. Very low in calories. One of the only things. <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking at the rest of it and thinking, not so much. Right. These are also. Those are right. also made from wonton wrappers, and those are called cannoli, uh, shortcut cannolis. Mm -hmm. And they're a dessert dip. So what I did with those was also cut them in half on the diagonal, and you may, this is just for me, the detail-oriented person, oh notice that goodness. little cute edge that's yeah. using a pasta wheel. And then these are fried, so these are not healthy, Yummy. but for the holidays, who cares, right? And then we sprinkle them with, um, after they're cooled with confection sugar. And then the dip is cannoli filling, which also tastes wonderful with fruit. And what's in the cannoli filling? It's uh, confection cheese. sugar, ricotta cheese, and vanilla. I've never seen uh, cannoli as a dip. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah, and the fruit is really good in it, too. And those are uh, uh, pistachio, pistachios. Pistachios. I recognize that. Yeah. What else can you put on there? Oh, you could put uh, colored sprinkles or orange rind, whatever suits your fancy. Mm -hmm. All right, and what do we have over here? Those, that is pesto cheese spread, which um, I usually serve with crackers, but of course we had to dress it up a little uh, for the holidays. So they're in little phyllo cups, which you can buy in the freezer section. Yeah, I just supermarket. saw somebody serving chili in those the other day. Oh, wow. Well, that was a, a bite sized way of doing it. Bite sized it. chili. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I put a little roasted red pepper on top. And, and what is in the filling? It's the a pesto? pesto sauce that you can either make yourself or you can yeah. buy and mix it with cream cheese. Wait, I mean, because it's, it's not really easy. If you buy easy. it yourself, it's easy, but pesto, well, I it's make not my, hard. I like right. to buy, make my own. I don't right, know, right, and all me that. too, yep. All right, I have to say, those Christmas cookies are just gorgeous, and, and they're basically butter and sugar, right? That's right. But the nice thing about those is that you make the recipe, shape it into four logs, and they can be frozen or refrigerated, refrigerated for a few days or for... Uh, frozen for a few months, and then just like the Pillsbury, you take them out, slice them, and bake them, decorate them the way you want. And the advantage of them is that you can serve them plain, which I normally do during the year, or sprinkle them like this with colored sugar, or dip half in, or about a third in chocolate. How did you do that so perfectly, dipping the... Uh, it takes a little practice, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. looks like it's a, a perfect half moon, or a quarter yeah. moon, or... I guess, um, well, and, that one's not too good over there. Um, just some chocolate chips melted with a drop of Seriously. canola oil. Yeah. So it's 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 not some fancy chocolate because it looks like to. a really rich dark chocolate, but it's not. No, I don't think so. I think I might have used the darker chocolate chips. Uh -huh. And then if you want to further gild the lily, you dunk it into these uh, colored sprinkles that is or so chopped cute. Uh, pistachio nuts or chopped hazelnuts, whatever you like. Uh -huh. Now, well, we were saying these things were quick and easy, but mm -hmm. not so much. I mean, and you're, you're really into the presentation, which I happen to appreciate. I think that's, oh, thank that's you. part of the, the festival. You're just slopping the food out I'm a out little there. obsessive. Well, yeah, you I know, can see that. Well, you know I what? I, you, saw me, you, <laughs> you saw me setting up. <laughs> but you know what? You can, um, you can do those any time of the year and just do them plain. Mm -hmm. So they're really not difficult. And those rolls, I always have them in my freezer. I do them with my little granddaughter. Really? She slices them. With, when she, since she's two years old, she slices them with a plastic knife. And then we put colored sprinkles or whatever she wants on them. And the cookies are fairly easy. But people aren't really into doing things that, that require a lot of baking. I mean, th this is, even though you buy the wonton mm -hmm. rolls, right, it, right. you still got to, it, it takes some time. And, a little. And frying them. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, the other, art. the other shortcut, though, is that you can buy things that you are already prepared and just put a flour on them or a little mm -hmm. bit of parsley, just garnish it, and people will, you don't even have to tell them that you didn't make it. That, yeah. to me, is one of the best things, you know, because you eat with your eyes, I think, before you really eat with your mouth and yeah. taste. So if something looks good, instead of bringing it home from a place and put, serving it out of their yeah. containers, oh, yeah, no. if you put it in your own pretty uh, china or a pretty platter or something, right away it'll look beautiful and people yeah. won't know that I mean, you haven't... You know, I notice here, like, for instance, you've had the gold tablecloth, but then you mix in the red and the red napkins. It really is all part in the, the doily underneath the cookies. 
it all adds to the... It did take a couple of uh, sleepless nights, I have to tell you. Oh, great. Don't tell the people that. <laughs> I wanted to look perfect for the show. <laughs> what about, you know, the, the, the big meals, though? I mean, people get obsessive, too, about um, having everything just so perfect. Are, are there, most I, mean, people, aren't, I don't think most people do anymore. You know, my, At least maybe they're my friends. My, <laughs> my family does, but uh -huh. I mean, there is no shortcut, though, if you want, if you want something to be, you know, done right. No, but the only thing I think it's how you organize things. I always sort of make a spreadsheet, and those who are listening who know my computer skills, I'm not too swift with it, but in terms of cooking, I can do a lot of things, and I make a list of what I'm going to serve, and then another list or further over of what I have to prepare, and then how many days in advance I can make this, and how many I can do that, that type of thing. So, you know, you just have to break it down and not do a huge chunk of things all at the same time, and I think that's the secret. What's your theory on hors d'oeuvres? I'm, I'm a minimalist on the hors d'oeuvres. Do you like to go um, big on the I hors like hors d'oeuvres, yeah. 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 But even if you're going to serve a big dinner? Yeah, I'm not as many as I used to, but I think it's nice to have something with a glass of wine first. And do you like to have something, the hot sand, the cheeses, uh, and the yeah, dips maybe, like this? Yeah, it could, you could have a dip and uh, even just cheese and crackers, and now people have nuts and olives, things like that, and um, that really is probably enough if you're going to have a big dinner. I'm looking at this thinking it could be both an hors d'oeuvre and a dessert, but it's not really. This is really just a dessert. Because it's too sweet. Right, too yeah. sweet, yeah. And what, what are some of the other traditions that, you know, you, you celebrate Hanukkah and you're Jewish, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what else for this time of year? Well, you, I mean, you do, you do advice, too, for right, people. It's that's, like, oh, know, I you, do. You I get cross all uh, cultural generations. I get generations. people calling me, or I see them, and I do water aerobics. People asked me the other day about questions about bread. Someone yeah. else asked me in the supermarket line, wherever I go. <laughs> uh, but basically, now what was your question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was just about giving advice, advice about holiday advice. You, you, yeah. you go straight across the board. You could, yeah, you know. yeah. I think just uh, more people ask me um, about a particular recipe mm -hmm. very often. Yeah. All right, well, and you've got a cookbook, so they can check Two it out. Two cookbooks. This is, this is really gorgeous, though, and we're thank all going to join you. Hey, Ron, you want to taste this? You want to be our official yeah. taster? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, thank you, Ellie. Thank all right, you. and that is it for Gooder Boston. Tomorrow night, our Beat the Press Year in Review. Changes on the business side of the media, the frenzies that caught everyone's attention, and our annual list of winners and losers. That's tomorrow at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Good night.